What's up, Nick fans? All right, I am Victor Hatiba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, again, again, I have a great honor. Jonathan Macri from Nick's Film School. Thank you, thank you so much, my bro. Welcome in our I channel. Thanks for having me on again back uh after I think last year, right? Was the first time I was on. And uh yeah, I mean last year went pretty well, so let's talk again and hopefully this year goes even better. <laughs> Hi, bro. And uh, I will start and uh, talk about, with you about uh New York Knicks in this off season. What's your opinion, uh, the movements, new players? What's your opinion about the New York Knicks in this offseason? Um, I would say overall, I think it's been a successful summer. Um, you know, it's so obviously the big the big move was getting Mikel Bridges in here, which is uh I think a trade that will really be the one that uh this this front office, Leon Rose and, and everybody there kind of will will become known for um you know obviously rose brought brunson in here and and hired uh tom thibodeau and made all sorts of other great acquisitions including oj and obi last season um but this is the trade where he really stuck his neck out and he he risked a lot certainly um you know a lot of the organization's future is is kind of now tied up in in you know or has been given away to get Mikal Bridges. So, you know, it's a big bet, um, but I think it's a bet on their culture, certainly how Mikal fits in with that culture. And I think it's a bet on making this a team that, you know, is not maybe going to be the traditional NBA championship type team that we've seen a lot over the last 15 years where you have, you know, two or three stars or superstar players, but really just a a team that every moment you have, you know, or it's 48 minutes of solid two-way play and a bunch of players who are capable of doing a lot of different things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it was a good summer, obviously losing Isaiah Hartenstein hurt. Um, that was, that was tough, but there was nothing that they could do to, to, to match the offer that Oklahoma city made him. So I don't blame, I don't blame hard. I know. So some fans are a little hurt, By the fact that Hardenstein <laughs> took the money, I mean, I, I to each his own. I can't blame him. Uh, I, I look forward to cheering him when he's when he's back here in New York. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I think they got better. I, I think they got better, and I think the biggest thing is this off season allowed you know all of their injured players to time to rest up and heal and get back to normal. Because I think if you combine what we saw in January and you add in, you know, what we saw in like February, March, April, and, and a little bit in May where guys like Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart and obviously Jalen Brunson really reach new peaks. And then you throw in Mikael Bridges. I think when you combine it all, it should make for a good mix and they should be really good. So uh, again, Hornstein losing him will hurt, but I, I think all, all in all, they had a, a good summer. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, but in Brazil, okay. Jonathan, <laughs> but in Brazil, Jonathan, uh, so many people talk about New York needs, Knicks, né? needs yet a center. In your opinion, uh, do you agree about this or not? I think people, I think it's, a, I think there's a couple things at play here. At some point, does New York probably need another center or maybe even a different center? Yeah, I, I think that that might be safe to say. Um, now, I think Mitchell Robinson's excellent in a lot of ways. When he is healthy, and we'll get back to that in a second, I think the Knicks have done a really nice job of, I'm not going to say that they have built a team around his strengths, but they have built their team in a way that maximizes Mitchell Robinson's strengths and minimizes his weaknesses. So um, they take more, not just Jalen Brunson or, or Julius Randle, everybody on their team takes more shots from uh, areas that tend to lead to, when you miss it, tend to lead to an offensive rebound 
than any team in the league, and they have the best offensive rebounder in basketball in Mitch. So that's a plus. Um, I think on obviously on defense, he is a prototypical Tom Thibodeau defensive center. Does has gotten a lot better in the pick and roll over the years. He's I think he's one of the best pick and roll uh, defenders in the league at this point. And he was making a case for all defense when he was when he was healthy at the beginning of the last season. So uh, Mitch is phenomenal. I think the reason people are a little skeptical and think that they'll need another center at some point is one at this point, it's, it's tough to count on Mitch making it through an entire season healthy. And, and you know, that just is what it is. There's really not anything we could say about that other than, you know, keep your fingers crossed. And then I think the bigger part of it is when Mitch went down last season and Harnstein, and at, it wasn't even that. It was after Mitch went down and after Julius Randle went down. And if you want to throw OG Ananobi in there too, Hardenstein became such a pivotal part of this offense and did so using a lot of just a skill set that Mitchell Robinson is never going to come close to p- possessing. He's just not that sort of offensive center in terms of being able to operate in the short roll and, you know, just has the passing. I mean, Mitch is just a very, very a much more limited player. Now, does that mean that the offense uh, is going to suffer with Mitch in there instead of uh, Hardenstein? I'm not so sure. I don't think it necessarily has to. This offense has been really good at times over the years with Mitch in there, and now he's going to be surrounded by a ton of talent. If he just concentrates on doing the things he does well, I think they'll be fine. I I am worried about the injury thing. Um but more than that, I guess I guess my biggest question is for the Knicks to get where they want to go, which is obviously an NBA championship at this point, that's once you made the McCall Bridges trade, that became the expectation. Um, will they need a center on the roster who does some things that just Mitch is never going to be able to do, which is, I would say, on the defensive end, a little bit more, uh, I'll, I'll I'll use the term scheme versatility in terms of like being able to switch out onto the perimeter a little bit more. Mitch hasn't always been comfortable there um, or just switching in general. Um, you know, Mitch isn't bad of a switch defender, but again, when you put him out on the perimeter, when, when you're asking Mitchell Robinson to make decisions and make the split second decisions and many split second decisions over the course of a game, you know, like we saw, I, I hate to bring this up again, but Part of the reason the Sixer series got extended to a sixth game is because Mitchell Robinson fouled um, Tyrese Maxey, you know, on that three point attempt. It's just, it was a tight situation. He probably got a little jumpy, but I, I could see being a little hesitant to, to trust Mitch in those situations moving forward. And then on offense, again, can you survive four rounds in the playoffs? Can you win? Can you win four rounds in the playoffs? With with one true center, because really is the only true center on the roster that you know, other than Jericho Sims, um, who just is a really limited offensive player. Long story short, I'm fine with Mitch for now. I'm not worried about it. I think they'll be fine getting through the regular season, even if he gets injured for a period of time. I do think at some point there may need to be at least another someone else on the roster who could be a true five. Unless, and again, this is one of my big questions for the season, they're going to deploy more, uh, I'll say, small ball, even though it's not really small ball. It's more like skill ball. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Where, where, like you know, the Golden State Warriors, no? Yeah, Play exactly. I mean, and, and Golden State made those lineups famous a decade ago with, with Draymond Green at center. And in OG Ananobi, I mean, look, OG Ananobi's not the, the offensive player that Draymond Green is. Draymond Green was like the quarterback of those offenses as much or more than Steph Curry was. So that was a really unique two-way attack. And Draymond also might be the smartest NBA defender we've seen in the last 20 years. Uh, OJ Anobi is pretty darn good, though, uh, defensively. And he could certainly, you know, do a a pretty nice Draymond approximation if he has to play the five. How much? I'm not worried so much about how much the Knicks will go to that in the regular season. But I wonder, as they're thinking long-term you know, playoffs this year, playoffs in the years to come. It, it, do they? How big a, a a piece of the puzzle do they think that that's going to be? And in conjunction, if they're if they 
do think that they will need a, a more traditional five, a more traditional center. Does that, you know, I, I wonder what the move is to go get that player because to just say, all right, we're going to trade Mitchell Robinson for someone. I, I don't know that what, what that is really going to do for them. So I feel like if they're going to address the, the center position in a more significant way, it would probably be a result of a, a some kind of a more significant roster move. If for no other reason, then most really good centers make a lot of money. And Mitchell Robinson, one thing you say about him, he doesn't cost a lot. He's only making $14 million this year. So uh, I don't know. For right now, though, I- I'm fine with where they are. And I trust that in, in time, if they need to address it, I, I think that they have th- what it takes to address it. I, I saw today in social media uh, rumors, né? Uh, for example, uh, Kessler from Utah Jazz. Do you believe in these rumors or, or just just Nick's rumors for you? Well, <laughs> do you understand? They, <laughs> I mean, if you believe the, the reporting, which we have no reason not to, they definitely checked in on Kessler earlier in the summer, like before the draft, maybe around draft week. Uh, I don't think that's going anywhere right now. Um, I would actually be surprised if they made a deal. I'd be very surprised. I'd be shocked, frankly, if they made a trade before the season started. Um, That said, down the line, I could see something happening. I mean, the Jazz, uh, yeah, I I mean, I I also saw a report, someone who reports on the Jazz uh, kind of uh, seemed to intimate that Kessler is not in their long-term plans, which is not particularly surprising to me because this is a guy that came in to their system as a rookie. And I think he started, if not every game, he started almost every game. The guy finished third in rookie of the year voting. And then last season he was in and out of the starting lineup. He was seemed to not be, like lose a little bit of favor with his, with the coaching staff there. So you could argue that if you're Utah, there's never going to be a, a better time to trade Kessler than between now and the trade deadline of the season. And if you look around the league, I think you could argue that there is no team that um, it may be cause the Knicks are trying to win big, like immediately. I think you could argue that the Knicks may be will, maybe among a, a small group of teams willing to put forth the best package for his for Kessler. Now, what is that package? I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and start throwing out fake trades. I will just say the nice the thing that's a, a, a gift and a curse with Kessler is he makes very little money. So you that's in the Knicks situation, I think that's probably for the best. Um, unless you really love Deuce McBride, uh, because they could you know you could do a deuce for for Kessler trade straight up. I love Deuce McBride. I don't want to see Deuce McBride go anywhere, but if you're talking about maybe make you know making the roster make the most sense, I could see a trade built around those two players uh, making some sense. I think the Knicks would, would have to throw in some draft compensation. I, I don't know what that would be, but they would, I think, have to add in something there. Um, so, yeah, they could get a deal done. I, I just don't see anything happening right now. And again, that's fine. They don't, the roster on day one does not need to be the roster that you're, you're going to go into the playoffs with. You have a long time to, to sort all that stuff out. I, I have bad, uh, bad memories with Utah Jazz, né? Danny Ainge in the... Do you, do you remember? Well, the... look, Ainge, here's, Ainge is a great GM. He really yes. is. I mean that. Yes, because yes, I agree. He, he reads the marketplace and he gets the most that he could get. And if you look at the Gobert trade, certainly, and the, and the Diane the Donovan Mitchell trade, um, like I think he extracted as much value from both of those players as possible. Now, even you could look at, at the, like I thought he did well in the Kelly Olenek trade, tra- trading Kelly Olenek to Toronto. I think he did pretty well there. Um, a lot of people looked kind of, Gave, gave Toronto like the side eye, like, why are you tr- trading for a, 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 an expiring contract and you're like not a team that's even going to be in the playoffs probably next year? So he, he does well. You know, that said, I don't ever think Danny Ainge is someone that's going to keep a player out of spite. I know a lot of Nick fans feel that way. 
I don't believe that. I think if he keeps a player, it's because he feels like whatever offer is on the table right now is not good enough that if I keep this player and then I'm, I am unable to trade the player later, I'm going to have regrets about whatever I walked away from. Cause that's really what it comes down to. It's like, what are you leaving on the table um, versus like what might be there another day? And I think Kessler is in a, certainly an intriguing player. I'm not sure where the team is out there that is going to blow him away with an mm-hmm. offer. All that said, he's not going to give him away. And I, I, I again, I love Deuce Pride. I don't want people to hear this, think that this is a, a reflection on what Deuce Pride is. But Deuce Pride is a small guard who doesn't play point guard, really. Um, yes. He's a very he's a very small wing. That's really what it is. And those players, even the very best version of those players, which you could argue that Deuce is because he defends so well and he's become a great shooter, are just, I think they have limited value. Whereas Kessler, as a elite rim-protecting five who, you know, you're not going to find a better, a better center in drop coverage than him. And, uh, you know, he's he, he's got some skill on the offensive end, too. Some skill that Mitchell Robinson does not possess. Uh, those guys are, you know, I mean, look at it this way. The going rate for that, that, that sort of player in the NBA these days is like $20 million a year plus. Like Jared Allen just got, got an extended extension for $30 million a year. Now, I think that might be a little bit of an overpay. Then again, you could say, well, Cavs could probably trade that contract pretty easily. So, if you're looking at Kessler as a guy who on his next contract is going to be making $20, $25 million a year, well, if you're Danny Ainge and you have that player on a rookie contract for another year and a half or two, three years, that's a really that's a pretty valuable chip. But again, it all comes down to what is somebody willing to pay? Is anybody out there going to pay you know, a distant, unprotected future first-round pick and like a first-round swap for Kessler? I don't think so. I don't think so. I could be wrong. Um, so you know, that's why ne- they negotiate. I, I, I am. I would imagine the Knicks will kick the, kick the tires on Kessler again before the trade deadline, but we'll see. Uh, and uh, about our draft, uh, this rookie Tyler Kolek, Knicks fans in Brazil, so excited about the, this player. What's your opinion? Do, uh, what's your expectations about uh, this rookie? Um, I don't have many expectations this season. I, I would be surprised. I mean, I, I think he'll play at at some point, probably after maybe one or two players, because guys get injured, you know, and there'll be games where like mm-hmm. multiple guys are sitting out. Like, I think he'll play minutes as a as a rookie. Um, I I don't expect like obviously he's not going to be part of the rotation on day one. I, they, they just don't they don't have the minutes for that sort of thing. But I think he is. I think he is what. I mean, looking at his summer league performance, I think he is as advertised, which is a guy who obviously was an older college player, comes in maybe a little bit more ready to contribute than a lot of uh, a lot of rookies because he's on the older side. He spent four years at a, at a good college program. Um, and I think he's... I don't, I, I don't know how... I think he's got some shit to him, which is... A, 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 I don't know how to, how to translate that. He's gritty, you know. He's a Tibbs guy. He's a he, he fits right in yes. with this culture. A guy who is going to get the most out of whatever talent he has. I do think that there's. I mean, he. I'll say this. I think he's probably the best passer on the team on day one. Uh, and which is that's that means something. Like they don't have an elite passer, and I think specifically, he's really good at throwing lobs. He's really good at throwing hit ahead passes, um, and. I think those sorts of things will will come in handy. I think he's a he's a nice development guy who, again, if you are looking at your roster and you're thinking you may need to trade Deuce with Pride at some point. I know I'm I, this is the third time I've talked about trading Deuce with Pride. People are going to think I hate Deuce. I love Deuce, but like in the NBA, as we've seen with um, Emmanuel quickly, as we saw with R.J. Barrett, as we saw with Quentin Grimes. Sometimes you need to trade young players who you like mm-hmm. and are and have been and you drafted and you develop like that's just what happens sometimes. So you need to keep refreshing the pipeline. And I think Kolek to me profiles as someone who should be an NBA rotation player, 
um, if he could develop a a credible pull up jump sh- jump shot because he's I don't think he's quite there right right now. He's more of a spot up three point threat. If he could become a threat with a pull up three, a real threat with a pull up three, well then then he becomes a really interesting player. Because then, with with his craft and with his ability to kind of manipulate a defense and kind of get into the heart of a defense and his shot making from mid range and all that kind of thing, um, then he becomes a really tough player to guard. And then you're talking like, oh, maybe, maybe he grows into being one of the better sixth or seventh men in the league. Um, we got a long way to go before that. I mean, he was a second round pick for a reason. But I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see him to see him play and excited to see him improve. Uh, people talk nice. Still, this draft is this guy. Hey, you know he might be, and yet I'm so fascinated by the fact that the, they took him, who is a very one. Well, he's one type of player, and then they also took Pacom Dadier, who is one of the youngest players in the draft, who is as raw a prospect as you will find in the draft. Like this guy is a. I mean, he's got the the profile. I mean, like you look at his his size. Uh, at the position he's going to probably play. He's a wing player, and he's whatever he is, 6'9". You look at his ability to score, the ability to score that he showed at times, you know, as a prospect. His shooting, what he should be a good shooting ability, but he's a, like a lump of clay. You know, they really need to... Th- there's a long way to go to turn this guy into an NBA player, but if that sort of guy hits... So I just... I find it very interesting that within whatever it was, 10 picks of each other, they took these two guys who were just very, very, very different sorts of bets that an NBA team can make. And it, it's good, you know? It's like uh, you have a stock portfolio. You want to diversify your assets. Well, the Knicks did a nice job of diversifying their assets with their with their draft class. Yes. I would say that. Yes. And finally, Jonathan, Knicks have a great point guard. Yeah. So long time ago, né? Knicks needs a great point guard, and now he is uh, our franchise player. Yeah. What's your expectations with Jalen Brunson in the, the next season? Uh, my expectations for Jalen Brunson are to continue to blow away my expectations. Uh, that's all this guy does. Um, just when you think something, the next hurdle is impossible to clear, he clears it. And then he clears the next hurdle and the next hurdle and the next hurdle. Um, it is really one of the, I mean, it's one of the most improbable stories in recent NBA history. And, um, I don't know the way he captivated, this city last year is really it, it, the only, the only thing I could compare it to is like, it was like Linsanity. Remember Jeremy Lynn Linsanity back in 2011, except it didn't last for two weeks. It lasted for like three and a half months. And it like, you looked up and it was like every other day it was like, Oh, Jalen Brunson, you know, there's 38 more points and, Uh, another win and what he did in the playoffs. Like it's just, I think he is the best leader in the NBA. I think he has a good shot to make first team all NBA this season. I think he will maybe not this year, maybe this year. I don't know. Maybe at some point in the next couple of years, give, give himself a real run at, a, at an MVP. I think that that'll happen. Um, And I mean, here's what matters for Knicks fans. If he's on the floor and it's the last five minutes of a close game, it doesn't matter who the Knicks are playing. They could look at whoever the best player is on the other side of the court and they could say, we got someone just as good as you got. Right. And, and, you know, I'm not saying Jalen Brunson is the best player in the NBA. I mean, defensively, he's always going to be challenged and like, he's a small guard and there are, we we've seen there are ways that certain types of teams, especially teams that have length, you know, long teams, long athletic teams. Yeah. Like th- think about like the magic. Think about the Timberwolves who struggled mm-hmm. immensely playing against in the, that OG's first game. Um, you know, even the Celtics, like the Celtics are going to be a real challenge for him 
because they just have a lot of that's and that's the tough part right is who's the team that the Knicks need to get by if they want to win a championship it's probably going to be Boston well guess who might be the toughest matchup in the in these even Philly like I you know Philly look the Knicks won that series in six games and Brunson er, er, eventually came around Jalen Brunson was dreadful in the first two games of that series he was not good he struggled immensely and the fact that they won both of those games despite that is a testament to how special that team was but like even Philly you know they they had Ubre Jr and Batum last year now they're going to be able to throw Ubre Jr um uh Paul George and mm-hmm. uh oh my god I'm blanking on the guy they got from uh Miami uh Caleb Martin like that's a lot of length to to toss at Brunson. So, like, he will face challenges in the East this year and in the years to come. I have no doubt about that. Um, but, again, you know, doubt this guy at your own risk because he just he just keeps overcoming every every limitation that, that gets placed on him. So, uh, I love rooting for the guy. I feel really lucky to be able to say that he's our captain and that he's the leader of this team. And I just have, I think between him and Leon Rose and Tibbs, I just have a lot of faith in the organization. I, I feel like they will, continue to be, they will continue to be successful. I don't know if it's, it means they're going to win a championship. It's really hard to win a title. A lot of great teams in NBA history. were not able to climb the mountaintop, you know? So we'll see if they're able to, I hope, it would be great if they do. It would be great if they do in the coming years. Um, but uh, one one step at a time, as they as they say. But, uh, but for you, Knicks now is the second uh, team in the East for you? Uh, yeah. Just Boston. For me, just Boston. Knicks yeah, I mean, I, now, uh, uh, for me, né, it's a I think second Boston, team in the East. Boston is built... Mm-hmm. They are so perfectly built. Uh, mm-hmm. You really can't build a better basketball team. I mean, they're the only demerit they have is that. And look, this might matter in a in a next playoff series. I, I just, I I think they they don't have a guy that I really truly trust in the last you know five ten minutes of a close game because I I mean I like Jason Tatum a lot. There's a reason Jason Tatum always gets mentioned as a top ten player and not a top five player. You know, um, but. Yeah, I think that I would put them second. I don't think there's a lot separating them from Philly or Milwaukee. I think I think Milwaukee's going to have a very big year, and uh, I think Philly's going to be really good. I mean, unless unless Philly gets really injured, which you know, Paul George, you know, Joel Embiid, like that could certainly happen. Uh, I think Philly's going to be excellent. You know, Knicks could finish. You know, the second best record in the East. Knicks could finish with the fourth best record mm-hmm. in the East. Like if you if you told me that. Like, here's the thing. Every year, we go into seasons with a kind of predefined set of tiers. And very rarely do the playoff seedings work out the way we thought that they were going to work out. So if you told me now that one of, maybe not Boston, but like one of Milwaukee, Philadelphia, or the Knicks were going to finish fifth or even sixth, I'd be like, all right, well, sure, I could see it. And yet, if you told me any one of those three teams was going to finish with the best record in the East and be even better than Boston, I'd be like, okay, I believe it. I just think there's a lot, like the top of the East is so good. And then when you throw in teams like Cleveland and Indiana and Orlando, and don't forget about Miami, um, that's a lot of, that's a lot of tough teams. And, um, they're all they're all trying hard to win. So I, I, I the Knicks are gonna have their work cut out for them to finish uh, you know, second in the East again. Uh I, I have confidence in them, but what regardless of whether they finish second, third, fourth, whatever, I think they have the goods, if they're healthy, to do some damage in the playoffs, and that's that's what's most important. You talk about surprise. I won't surprise the Knicks uh against Boston. I won't see Knicks beat the Boston. I would love playoffs. that. That'd be great, <laughs> you know. Um we'll see, you know. You got the Boston 
They're a tough team if they're healthy. Um, yes. But they are, first you know. Game, first game in the next, next oh, season. Oh, that game? Yeah, well, that'll be fun. Look, it'll be fun. Ring <laughs> night, the whole thing. Um, look, 82 games, a lot of games. Uh, I. Th- the nice thing about the Knicks is under Thibodeau, especially, they are they are built. They're built for the long haul, you know. So they'll uh, they'll one way or another they'll come out in a good spot after 82 games. Hopefully, it starts with a win in in Boston. We'll but we'll we'll see. Uh, the last question for you, Jonathan. Yeah, it's your opinion, your feeling. Okay, your feeling. My feeling. Yes. What's your expectations for you, the Knicks, in the next season? Knicks has a chance uh, uh, wins the, the the conference. Your opinion? What's your expectations with this team? What's man. what's your heart said? Your heart. My heart says they're probably a year away. Uh, my heart says that. Uh, I think a conference finals would be a really wonderful accomplishment. Uh, this team has not been to the conference finals since uh, the year 2000. It's a long, long time. Uh, a long time. Yeah, I mean, they should have made it last year, for being honest, but, you know, one too many injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say my expectations, I know that's not the hot, you know, hot, spicy take. That everybody wants. Everybody wants. Oh, we're going to win the championship, or we're going to make the finals. I think my you're telling me what I'm what I really feel like. I'd say conference finals, which me would too. be would be fine if, that, if that's what happens. I'd be, I'd I'd love that. You know, go go down swinging and really, you know, get, give yourself a chance, uh, which I think they'll do. But who knows? If you listen. The Knicks could absolutely win the title this year. Yes. Could absolutely uh, win the title. I it, bro. it shouldn't shock anyone if they did that. <laughs> bro, I hope see this video in the in the future and remember this day yeah, when well, I talk with you about you about this, bro. You, really. Listen, man. <laughs> if if they win if they win it all, I will have a lot of a lot of clips to go back and revisit and uh and uh you know get get whimsical but anyway uh this is good man it's fun fun talking to you i hope it's a good season for you guys i hope it's a good season obviously for the knicks and uh yeah you know check us out at uh at knicks film school we we're we're always doing stuff uh and uh we we look for for any any new uh supporters we can get so there you go yes jonathan Thank you for your time. Congratulations for your job. Excellent job. Excellent job. So, uh, really. And really, thank you so much, né? In the Nick Fans Brazil again, bro. Thank you so much. We'll do it again next season. Yes. <laughs> okay, bro. I hope see you in the future. Okay? Yeah, thank you absolutely. so much. Be well, bye brother. Bye, bro. E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço!